Hello and welcome back to the Chatterscape podcast, where we discuss media in the form of topical-based discussions and or reviews. I actually did that on the fourth attempt. <laughs> I could not get my words out on any of the previous attempts. Uh, I'm your host, Drenkin Thomas Hughes, and today I'm going to be discussing a movie that just came out last week, uh, worldwide pretty much. I think it came out in Japan last year, but it actually didn't come out till well, this past week, everywhere else. And that is the movie Spy X Family Code White. Uh, for people who don't know what Spy X Family is, it is a anime, well, manga as well, that's based, uh, focused on a family, all with their own little secrets. The dad's a spy, the mom is an assassin, and the daughter has tele- telepathic abilities. Almost uh, didn't get that one out there. And basically, the whole point of the show is, and the book itself is he's trying to get close to a target. That's why he needs a family to do so. Uh, the mom doesn't know he's a spy. The daughter knows he's a spy, and she knows the mom's an assassin because of it. Obviously, abilities. Um, as I said, the, the two adults don't know what their line of works are, and the whole premise is then uh, them letting her go to school, using her, obviously he's using her to get close to his target, and that's pretty much what what it is. I'm not. I'm almost finished the first season of the anime. Uh, pretty much bash through. 20 odd episodes quite quickly i've just got a little bit left to finish on it but i still wanted to watch the movie obviously me, both me and hayden did uh, it, was, it was like okay let's go and watch it i looked into it and you didn't have to actually watch the anime really to understand what's going on and when watching it you can see that because at the, the very like opening it pretty much explains everything uh, it pretty much explains obviously their three roles in this show the whole overall plot what's going on and basically explains all three characters so it, i like movies like this where they're not essential to the actual core story that the actual show is telling it's more the fact that this is a like a, a, a side arc um something that you can literally probably get rid of entirely and you won't miss it from the main story because they're more likely not going to reference it uh, at all uh, I think Cable Bebop did something similar, but I'm pretty certain it was actually part of its story. Because I know obviously they did their movie as well, but um, I think this this is probably the first big anime movie I've actually got to see in cinema. Because, well, I'm not really counting the two Demon Slayer ones I've seen so far because they've actually just been compilation episodes. Obviously, just to give you a sneak preview of Swordsmith Village. And uh, the current one, which is the Hashira training arc. Obviously, I saw both of them in cinema. And I say, Hayden wanted to go watch this. And I was like, okay, let's go and watch it. Uh, we don't have to worry about continuations of the actual anime. We don't have to worry about actually finishing or catching up uh, with the two seasons that are actually out. Because there's, so far, there's two seasons. One has got 25 episodes off the top of my head. And one has 12 episodes. And I think this is like the surrogate for like the second half of that series. So that instead of them releasing a sec, obviously another 25 episode series, uh, I think this is their case of either. I'm not too sure if they're going to do the next half and can- obviously a bunch of episodes at some point and call it the rest of season two, or if they're going to just call it series three and just use this as an excuse to say, okay, we took a little break, focus on a little movie, and we came back. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a fucking clue, but we'll see when it actually. The rest, the next like batch of episodes comes out, which I don't know when it is. Uh, I'll try and catch up before then, though. So, no. But yeah, so I so what went to watch the movie on Friday. It came out into like a lunchtime showing, and had a blast of it. it it's fun. It's uh, pretty much like the show. If you, if you enjoy the show, you're more likely going to enjoy this film because it is pretty much the exact same sort of humor. Uh, same sort of action. I mean, there's even like a massive over-the-top action sequence at the end involved with the mom. Uh, which kind of sums up... It, it goes pure anime, like her fight scene does. Uh, which sort of does fit her character's assassin-type background, like her fight style. So it would make sense to have like this really over-the-top fight for her. Whereas the dad gets us basically a basic sort of down-to-earth sort of spy-type gunfight. But as I say, it, it, if you like the show, you're pretty much probably going to enjoy this. It covers everything that you'd want. Uh, and uh, Obviously, for 
the plot of this film it's basically uh, Anya is getting into a cooking class uh, that's the next basically available star she can get and turns out like the guy who's actually in charge of this class basically his favorite dish uh, you can only really properly get in this specific town uh, like, that's the the preferred version that he likes i should say and the whole film is then them free going to this town it's like a wintry setting it's very christmasy but it's not christmas at the same time it's just very christmasy with the the snow and the lighting um i generally thought it was a christmas film uh online it, it, i read somewhere that it kind of was and i was like what it's a bit of a stupid time to release it. why not just wait till the end of the year but it, it's not really it's just it looks and you can kind of say at times it feels christmasy but it's not an actual christmas movie which is good because it'd be weird releasing that in april and again shazam did that fucking back in 2019 so, you know, you can't really uh, argue there. But yeah, so obviously they go to this town, this little village and whatnot, and they get roped into some shenanigans involving, like, the military police and basically have to save Anya, who gets kidnapped by them. And most of the film, there's not too much going on. It's more comedy-based. Like the actual show, it's a lot more comedy-based for the majority of the run until you get to that last act, which goes full action. But obviously, the comedy part of it is pretty funny. There's some really stupid moments. I mean, I'm not going to go into like spoilery details, but all I'm going to say, if you watched it, what do you think of the poo god? Because, well, the poop god, sorry, because that, that scene just took me out of it entirely. Not in a bad way, just took me out of it, because I was just like, what the fuck is this? Uh, but it was still pretty funny. And... I say there's there's quite a lot in that first two acts really that obviously not just keeps the story rolling for them trying to get the the ingredients to make this specific dessert dish, but also there's little parts here and there that are slowly pushing the actual main plot, which is the military police. Uh, obviously, there the stuff that they've got to deal with, I should say, because I said there's there's two plots. The A plot is them trying to get the desserts the b plot is the military police um so most of the a plot is throughout this first bit and then of course it's right at the end whereas the military police b plot is sprinkled over early on and you do get to see like the hinting of some chocolate uh, shenanigans and stuff like that and then right towards the end it's when it fully kicks in and then these two plots collide so the family have to deal with the military police because of them obviously kidnapping Anya or I don't know if it's actually in the trailer it ex explains this I don't really spoil it but basically she's got something they want that's probably the best way of saying this I've got some she's got something they want so that's why they take her to try and get it and of course I say the family then after trying to get her without actually revealing to each other that they're both there which is quite humorous and I say I I've really gotten into this show over the past what week maybe two weeks because i said i spoke about this on the last episode with connor that i'd got into watching it uh and i spoke about the fact that i was going to watch this movie and i thought well i might as well just talk about it uh at the way i say i, I just I, it's one of those ones where it's quite different to what i'm used to watching because i'm in terms of anime most of the time i watch these sort of like stuff like attack on titan demon slayer um at the moment i'm watching kaiju number eight and stuff along that line uh, so this is kind of like really far from my usual uh, genre-ish in anime. But uh, obviously I like spy stuff. So that kind of helps me get into it. And obviously the comedy does help me stick into it. Uh, and I just like the fact that none of them know about each other. And at this point, I'm pretty certain still in the anime I read. I'm pretty certain I've even read it. It's in the manga at this point. They still don't know who... The basically what each other are capable of and that's it's just crazy because it's very obvious at times that there's weird shit going on but somehow they get away with it but so i got really into it obviously i know hayden had me pick up some like little miniatures statues from it your papa uh I'm trying to not knock everything over off my desk you got mama these are all like these are about 10 pen each from as to these were but i said i'll get her from so i Went through and went, fuck it, I told you I'd get them. And then I also brought a, a much bigger one, which was at 25, I think it was. 
had a few of these because obviously I, I've been collecting a lot of statues like that now because I do have like Attack on Titan and say Demon Slayer ones of them. Um, I'm at the moment really into anime collectibles because I'm slowly getting into a, a few more animes. Like I said, at the moment I'm literally watching um, Spike's Family. I'm in the middle of uh, Kaijin and Berate, um, Go Go Loser Rangers. A lot of stuff I spoke about on the last podcast. Um, I might rewatch Attack on Titan at some point. I'm getting at a point where I might sit down and watch it from start to finish. Um, what else? Demon Slayer starts soon, so I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, My Hero Academia starts soon as well, so I'll be watching that as well. So I'm, I got a lot I'm watching at the moment, and I'm someone who didn't really watch a lot of animes growing up. It's not the only ones you call ones you Pokemon, you Yu Gi Oh. Those are the only ones I really watched growing up. But over the years, I've started to actually enjoy a few more because there are a few interesting ones that do pique my interest so obviously i've definitely become more of an anime lover than i was before but it it yeah it just depends on the anime which i feel like it does, that covers most fucking like types of genres and that i I might not be heavily invested in it but there are the ones there and here and there sorry that i actually do enjoy and spoke's family as i say is one that i do enjoy because i said the, the movie is really enjoyable it's fun it's action packed when it wants to be. It's got a nice story with a lot of heart to it. Um, the voice acting is as good as it is in the anime. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more grander scale. The obviously visuals because of it being a movie. Um, but yeah, it it it's a fun uh, holiday themed ish movie. Because they, though it's not Christmas Day, there is a lot of shots that do kind of make it look. I mean, even the trailer, there's a lot of shots that make you think, is this a Christmas movie? Uh, but no, it's just, just generally just looks like that in that place. It's just an actual, just like wintry looking market and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, obviously, I so said the animation is really good. I think there's like a massive, there's a part of it which. I obviously mentioned the poop guard without going too much detail about that. There's a part of it with that where the animation does change into like a, a different style. And it it, it is crazy. It, it It's weird. It's a weird sequence, but it's one of those ones that you just like, like farm to, uh, palm to the face and you're just like shaking your head, like chuckling stuff like what the fuck am I watching? But at the same time, you're like, this is hilarious. Um, but yeah, so it, it's slow. It is slow, I will say that, it, before it gets to the big action scene at the end. But I think there's enough in that first, what, say, hour to keep you invested. Um, especially, I say, if you like the family, the family dynamic that they have, if you enjoy that, you're going to be invested for the first, let's say, hour. And then, I say, then it kicks in at the end with this massive fight scene. Obviously, him going around, obviously, this giant fucking aircraft. Uh, trying to find obviously Anya, the mom going around just destroyed everyone because that's her character. If you haven't watched the anime, uh, like basically whenever she, Anya's in trouble, the mom just snaps into full assassin mode and just takes ev- everyone down in front of her, uh, usually non lethally, unless it requires, like it does in this one sequence in here, actual lethal uh, combat. Um trying to think what else I want to bring up about this film uh, I'd like more lo- like this like uh, I'd like other animes to go into movies that are just like random side plots that they can just as I say throw in that they don't that they can expand into a full feature length I'd, as I say, I'd like to see Demon Slayer do it again because they did it for the movement train arc and I was it's obviously that came out during Covid and it's upsetting because I would definitely have loved to have seen that on the big screen so I'd like to see them maybe attempt it again. Because I know I read uh, someone saying with this new arc, the obviously the Hosha training arc, apparently in the actual manga, which I do have. I haven't read it yet, though. Uh, apparently it's short, and it's short enough for them to, say, get a two-hour film out of it. So it's, it's, it's a shame that they didn't go that route, but it does mean they probably could flesh it out a bit more in the show by... So I'm pretty, I think I've read some of like a 12 episode series the next season. So they can obviously flesh it out a bit more than they could in that two hours, which I'd be okay with if it's not as slight let down as, as the Swordsmith one was. 
But so these type of ones now, we I say what Spike back X what Spike's family have done, these more side plots that aren't integral to the main plot and you can just get rid of it uh it doesn't have to be canonical. They can just not reference it whatsoever in the anime. Uh, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I, I say, I'm not... A, I don't think... I'm pretty sure season two came out before this film. So, obviously, I'm guessing it'll be season three if they do make references. But if they don't, I feel like you can just brush it off and be like, okay, it's fine. Um, like, it didn't really make too much in the end, which... You know, he's quite humorous that the whole film is literally for nothing. But I still would like to see maybe more of these going forward. Uh, let say other animes that I like, it would be cool to see them attempt it. I know Chainsaw Man's got a movie coming out instead of its second season straight away. And I'm guessing then they'll take on season two straight after the film. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm straight away watching that in cinema. It's a great show. I can't wait to actually check out the film. Um... And I'm guessing that's going to have a, such a different... That's obviously, paste-wise, probably a lot different because, obviously, that's the thing with stuff like Chainsaw Man and Demon Slayer. There's a lot more monsters and a lot more stuff they can utilise for action sequences. It, action sequences. My words are not working with me today. I'm too half asleep. Um, whereas Spike's Family, if you watch the anime where I'm up to the moment, which is, I say, things like episode 21... It doesn't require heavily on these action sequences. Yes, they are in the show, but they are not fully required. The more focus is on the the mission, essentially. It's more on Anya trying to get eight stars to get her dad into the school to get him close to his target. So it's, it's not a show that requires its action, but it does utilise it right, and the movie does it right as well. It doesn't need it for the first hour. It does it... Like, once or twice but it doesn't require it heavily it's more focus is on just building the story and then giving you all, all at once at the end to give you an action-packed ending which is very annoying because i needed the piss towards the end of this movie and when it finally kicks in with the action i was waiting to go and i was like come on come on come on and the movie just dragged it and dragged it it's i say great action sequence great ending it's just it chose the worst point for me for it to kick in for me to need a piss so I, I'm I'm someone who doesn't like leaving a movie if I've never watched it in cinema. Uh, I'm I'm someone who doesn't like walking away and go to the toilet. I'd rather just stick it out and just, just just wait for it to end and then rush off to the toilet, which is what I did. Uh, but it got to the point in this where I was just I was almost the, wanting to just go fuck it. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. But I thankfully didn't. I sat for it the entire fucking film. Uh, and I sat for that last 20 minutes just crossing my legs just waiting for it to end and then the fucking film had the audacity to pretty much end with a lot of water and it's one of his last shots involved a, uh, a fountain like a water fountain and I was like oh you are kidding me uh, you couldn't have ended anywhere else you had to end on a water fountain when I need a fucking piss uh, but thankfully it was a quick scene and it ended and I was like yes 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 um but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it again. I'll probably pick it up uh, on Blu-ray when it comes out because it is it is something. If you're a fan of the anime, it's something worthwhile to check out. If you're not a fan of the anime or you've never seen the anime, I should say, it's a, okay. It's a good starting point. It's something as they for the fact it explains everything about the show pretty much that you need to know. Um, I know there's only there's a, there's a character in it that. At the point in the anime, she's only just come into it, so you can kind of need that info. Bit. You can probably watch the show to get that information. But to be fair, she's not fully integral to the plot. So like she comes into it, and she's more of just like a possible romance angle. So it's kind of the case of you can ignore that, uh, and just as a just just focus. Just, you can ignore that idea and obviously so you don't again you don't really have to watch the anime to get to that because i say it does enough explaining of who characters are for you to sit through and watch it um i say you'd it'd be cool having the knowledge of the anime behind you or the manga because as i say then you'd, you'd know a bit more about characters and a bit more about like their personalities um and so you pretty much get the three main ones their personalities have come across in the film so you know straight away um, but what I'm saying, for example, is the brother. You see the brother for a sequence, 
I think it's in for like two scenes. Um, of course, the anime and the manga would give you more detail on his relationship to his sister, which is a bit weird, but uh, it's it's push it's pushing boundaries. Specifically, him, he's pushing boundaries that should not be pushed. Uh, but thankfully, this film used him for one scene. And it's like, okay, yeah, no, we know how intense he is. That's just we don't need him for this. Let's, let's just get him out of here. We don't need him for this. Um, but yeah. I'm pretty certain uh, One Piece does a lot of these type of films as well. I think there's one, it won't come out like not long, like recently, or it's coming out soon. I definitely remember seeing one pop up on like a, a cinema website for a One Piece film. Uh, I can't remember if that was a little while ago or if it was coming up. I'm pretty certain it was a little while ago. So I do like that other. I do like this type of idea. Just go for and make a anime movie that can connect and cannot connect. I said, I don't know about if the One Piece one connects or not. I don't have the audacity to try and sit through fucking thousands of episodes of One Piece, so it's way too many for me to fucking try and sit through from start to finish. I'll be there for ages. And now I'm like, I'll get to a point, I'll fucking, I'll stop watching and I'll come back to it and I'll be like, fuck, I don't remember what, what I've just watched. I need to restart. I've done it Supernatural like three, four times now. And it's pissing me off because I want to finish that show. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's say it's, it's a good, fun anime movie uh, and a good continuation for the Spikes Family uh, series while you're waiting for the next set of episodes. Uh, so I think out of 10, ooh, what do I give this one? I think I'm going to give it a... Nine point four. I think I'm gonna give it. I think Hayden's definitely going higher than that than me. I think she's like, she's pretty like. I'm pretty saying it's like a second favorite film of the year, or maybe a third. Um, definitely top ten for me so far. But there's just a few other films I've seen this year that I would tip over it. I'm talking uh, Ghostbusters. I'm talking Godzilla and Kong. I'm talking Abigail. Um, Dune. But I would say. It's definitely up there. I say I think off the top of my head, it's like number six at the moment in my top ten list. But so that could all change. It could go up. It could go down on later viewings. But I feel like nine point four is a good starting point, and it pretty much fits in my sort of mindset where the anime has been because it's a fun show, and a lot of the episodes are pretty around that same point for me. Um, but yeah, have you seen Spike's Family Code White? If you have, put your thoughts in the description below. If you haven't, um, well, good. You can uh, go check it out, or you can go check out the anime to see if you would be enjoy. Uh, be, see if you're someone who would enjoy the film. Uh, so, so the anime is available at the moment on Crunchyroll, and you can also watch it on Netflix. The first season, at least, is on there, uh, and they say so the film is currently in cinema. Uh, they're pretty much doing like one, maybe two showings a day at the moment. They're not doing many, so it's one of those cases of. Uh, you just try to get to it if you can, if, if you want to watch it. If you can't, then you, you're basically buggered. I, I thankfully managed to find a lunchtime show in. It was an open show. And most of the showings I've seen online have been like late afternoon, early evening, which are a bit too far for me um, in terms of the time it would finish. So, yeah. Um, have you seen the actual anime as well? If you have watched the anime, uh, as I say, don't spoil anything for season two-ish. Because I haven't seen season two, and I haven't seen the last five episodes of season one, so don't spoil any of that. But what have you thought of the anime? Um, if you've read the manga, do you think it does well at adapting the manga? You know, I've been debating if to pick it up. I think about fifty quid for like the, the set of ten, and of course you gotta get the two that haven't been released yet, which is uh, volume eleven, which I, I think it is, which doesn't come out till May. And I think it's volume twelve is September, according to the internet. Um, yeah, as I say, if you've read the manga, do you think it does well in adapting the show to the anime? I know at a point, like, first, like, arc is pretty much single stories, but then they seem to be doing, like, two stories going forward. And if that's because that's how it is in the manga, if it is, let me know. Because, as I say, um, it is a bit weird that they do split these up, but it does add a lot more fun, interesting stories to the mix. Um, 
I'm pretty certain that covers everything, really, that I want to really bring up about this show. It, it's a fun show. I, I might sit down and discuss the actual show when I've finished it. Uh, when I finish season one, or when I finish season two, technically, I might just do them both at once. Uh, and I probably will come back to this film in a more spoiler-based discussion. If I can get someone on with me, uh, my only option at the moment would be Hayden. Uh, I don't know if Alex is into this show. If he is, I might try and get him if he ever watches the film. If he's not, then I'll say my only option really is Hayden, because she's the only one I know who watches it, because Connor does not like the show. Um... But yeah, so I'll probably will, I'll, we'll come back to it and do a full breakdown of stuff and stuff I like heavily. I just don't want to go into the full spoiler realm right now because it's literally as it's just come out, and the fact that you can there's not many showings on it, or at least for my local cinema, there's not many showings on it. I don't know about anywhere else, um, but because of that being obviously because there not being that many showings, obviously I didn't want to just spoil the movie for anyone who hasn't had the chance yet to go and see it. Um, and yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think uh, what I might do next week. Uh, I'll either try and get. I know I think I might have a recording session with Alex coming up. I just need to sort that out. And if I do, I might try and get him on to talk about something. I'm not too sure. If not, my other two options again would be trying to get Connor on, which is uh, isn't uh, as easy as it used to be at the moment. Uh, and then my last option would just be a single review again, but I'd have to try and figure out something to watch uh, to review. I might cover that new uh, Fall Guy movie that's coming out because that looks quite fun. Um, and, uh, the new Ryan Gosling flick that comes out Thursday, so I might I could always cover that um, this weekend and just put that out for next week. I don't know yet. It's a shame, obviously, I didn't cover Abigail when that came out because that was a fun film, but. I never got the chance to sit there and actually talk about it. Um, and other than that, I don't think I've really... I, I don't know what's really I could talk about. That's the problem. It's getting to that point where I'm just like, I need to go... And, I need to find something that's worth sitting down and talking about. I mean, I'm just a bit... I, I'm dragging this out to, to 30 minutes by just talking random crap towards the end here. Um, I mean, I could always talk about the, fa the fact that I watched Jaws in cinema for the first time. That was fun. Been waiting to, I've been waiting to that for about a year now. But every again, just like this, every time they put the showings up, they're shit showings. Uh, usually Jaws is one per day. And it's not even like one per day. It's like one per every other day. And it's usually like 8 o'clock at night. I'm just like, I'm not travelling down to cinema at 8 o'clock at night. Whereas this one I managed to get was 3 o'clock in the afternoon and that was perfect for me. And I didn't get back till after 6 o'clock because of the fucking bus. Um, but 3 o'clock in the afternoon was fucking sp spot on for me. And I was happy I finally got to see my favourite film of all time on the big screen. It's just something I wanted to do for ages. Uh, I'm still upset I haven't yet to do Jurassic Park. I've cancelled that like twice now. I meant to do it last year and this year and both have been cancelled. I'm hoping they do it again at some point so I can actually go and watch that. But George is the most important one for me. It was the one that I said so many times to Hayden. No matter what, you're ill, I'm ill, I don't give a shit. I'm dragging my ass out the house to go watch this movie because I have to go see it on the biggest screen possible. Uh, or else I feel like I let myself down. Because, as I say, it's my favourite film of all time. And I want, I would love I would love to see it in an actual cinema room. And I finally got to do it. And it was fucking amazing. It was, it, it was weird. It was, like, it was a very mixture of an old and young audience in there. But there's quite a few older, like, I'm saying 50s onwards older. And there was definitely some, like, 30s and below in there and it was just like huh that's the interesting dynamic of age ranges that was quite wasn't full but it was like still quite a few in there it wasn't as like Muppets Christmas Carol for but it is what it is and yeah it's just it's just an experience that I wanted to have and I got to actually have that experience which is pretty cool um and I feel like when you, they release these older movies on top of obviously around the time when there's pretty much not much coming out because so, so at the moment all it's really out is uh, Spike's family and that Challengers uh, and I know they've put more showings for Challengers but when they're releasing these older movies to just to because it, there's not to, enough coming out for them to warrant like putting this one film in multiple fucking screens I like that they go okay let's, let's look at older films let's give people who have seen the film 
they may have seen it in cinema before when it first came out or when they've released it before or people that haven't had a chance to see it in cinema we're giving them the chance to have that experience that they haven't had before and i think that's pretty cool uh, i know at the moment uh they're just i think jaws is the wrap up of the spielberg stuff they're doing at my local cinema i think next is the stanley kubrick stuff and a couple of other like older movies at the same time um I, I like when they're doing this sort of stuff. It, it, it's good, easy money, really. Um, Christmas, they always do loads of old Christmas films and say, easy fucking money. Easy money, because you'll get people to go and watch them. The classics, for a reason, because people will always go and watch them. Um, and now I've noticed my time's gone over the 30 minutes, so I finally, uh, I've dragged it out long enough. Uh, so yeah, obviously, as I say, if you've seen Spike Sammy Code White, put your thoughts below. Um, you can check out the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Audible, etc 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 um and you can check out the video on youtube along with all the other content on the channel um and yeah that's it i hope you enjoyed this episode and i hope you've enjoyed this little, like five to ten minute rambling towards the end where i ran out of fucking i ran too short on time yeah, that's why i always prefer having a second person there because they can help me drag you out but yeah i hope you enjoy that little bit of rambling at the end i hope you enjoy my thoughts on spike's family code white and i'll uh, see you next time Goodbye. If you like what you've seen, don't be afraid to uh, throw us a little like and uh, subscribe. That's always very appreciated over here. And, uh, well, I'll see you on the next video.